morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am excited today. We have a really awesome, um, divine lineup, if you will. Uh, today we are going to talk about um, Christmas and holiday traditions, forgiveness, and new beginnings. It, believe it or not, it all goes together, and very flawlessly, as a matter of fact. And I, it all came to me this morning at about 5:43. So that's when my eyes went wide open. So, where are you all from? What are you drinking this morning? I've got my festive mug. This is the ones we pull out this time of year. The mountain boy gave this to me a long time ago, and I love snowmen. I love Christmas. I love the holiday season. I love it for the reason for the season, not uh, the commercial side of things. We don't even really buy gifts, and this year uh, will be um, a definite on that. But we do a lot of handcrafted and uh, heartfelt gifting and it's very enjoyable so I want to ask you guys today what are your family's holiday and Christmas traditions I would love to know it's just always interesting to see what everybody does and would love to have you share that with me uh, for those of you that are new to our channel my name is Tammy Treyer. I blog at treyerwilderness.com where I share my family's 100% uh, off-grid lifestyle. We live with solar power and uh, we share a faith-led uh, preparedness, homesteading, and uh, simple living and off-grid living uh, education and just knowledge. And uh, I am an author and writer as well. And you can also find us educating at treyerwildernessacademy.com. If you are hoping to learn how to bake your first loaf of bread, you can go to treyerwildernessacademy.com and sign up for our free bread baking course. There will also be a knitting course coming very soon. I've been talking about that. It should be right around the corner, and that will be a free course to help you learn how to knit and then we will also have a um, knitting course available for those that are interested in learning how to knit socks and it's a course for men and women mind you because there's nothing better than a mountain man out in the woods being able to knit his own socks versus walking around with holy holy socks right it's a manly thing too um, it's a need it's a necessity it's a life skill so depending on how you live <laughs> so in addition to um, all that we had to talk about today, I was just, I'm a little late because I was talking to one of our audience members. Um, I wanted to mention our prayer requests and get them out there, get you guys aware of them. Um, we are a prayerful bunch. Uh, we have some really awesome prayer warriors amongst us. And um, today we have someone that is, Direly in need of prayer. Um, Tammy Richards just messaged me. She joins us every week. She's not able to join us live today, obviously, um, because she is um, in in the hospital right now with her father-in-law, who um, is experiencing uh, two subdural hematomas, and he has cancer on his lungs, and um, it's pretty grave uh, the prognosis, and. Uh, they're all visiting with him today, and uh, his name is Jim, and he is he is not a believer. So I want to ask you all to please keep him in personal coveted prayer there, so that we can uh, maybe lead him uh, to Jesus before he he passes on, and just pray that God can heal his cancer as well, and just to be there for the family and for Tammy. So in addition to that, guys, um, we also have a huge prayer list, and I just wanted to really quick run through it with you guys, um, and you can see it in the description below, and uh, there is another one on that is not on that list that I want to you to be aware of. Uh, Starry Hilder is a good friend of mine. Good morning, lovely. Glad to have you joining me, Rachel. Um, Starry Hilder has become a very good friend of mine. Uh, we are prayer warriors for one another, and just uh, I believe that God divinely connected us. She is on YouTube, and some of you may be familiar with her. She is having some health issues, and I would really appreciate it if you lift her in prayer. Diana says, I will be praying for Jim's salvation and his health. Thank you so much, sweet friend, and good morning. Um, our list is long, and, and guys, these are people that have directly reached out to me um, or are possibly local to me 
that um, are in, in need of prayer. And I'm just really humbled at how many people have reached out to us lately, um, knowing that we are prayerful and asking for prayer. That to me is just so super huge. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> I might. All right. So we have Tia, Shelly, Jess, Deborah Kidd and Pat Kenny are both going through uh, cancer treatments right now. Uh, Diana is looking for a home. And have you had any luck, my dear friend? Are, have you found a rental or a home that suits? So keep them in your prayers. Um, we have Libby and John, Elna, Patty, Andrea, Courtney and her family, Terry and his wife, Mama Mona and Papa Ken, Suzanne and Denzel, Bill and Sue, Rick and Dolly, Val and Cindy, Ben and Austin, Deanna and Russ, Darren, Brian, Scott and Mary, Scott and Ashley, Chad, Taylor and her family, David, Lori, Shannon and Angela, David and Donna, Karen, Jane, Carol and the Schaefer family and again Starry and Jim. I didn't have them added on the list because they came in quickly and they need to be added. So if you are prayerful, please do lift these people up in prayer. And also if you have a prayer need, please don't hesitate to either email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com or PM me on Facebook or leave it in the comments below. And if you don't want to give all the details, feel free to just leave that you need prayer. Uh, we don't need to know the details. Uh, God knows them already. Uh, but we would be very happy to lift you in prayer. And if you know someone else that's in need, please don't hesitate. So guys, what are your holiday traditions? And um, are they ones that you enjoy or ones that you don't so much enjoy? Because sometimes we get roped into, into traditions of other people. But I'm curious, and I'd love to know. Diana says, not yet. She didn't find her house, but we will be looking at a couple possibilities tomorrow. We have a great realtor from our church who is working hard for us. That's awesome. So awesome when you have somebody working for you. And I know you'll find the right place. It's going to be like a wedding gown that you just know when you put it on that it's just perfect. And it'll, it'll happen. The hard part is in God's timing. So one of the hard things that does transpire during the holidays and it's kind of going to roll us into um, our next topic. And actually, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, we have some traditions that we have started. Um, as a child, hello, Holly. We always went to get our Christmas tree the day after Thanksgiving. Now, we have sometimes successfully accomplished that here, but our schedule's pretty busy, and our weather doesn't always cooperate uh, this time of year. So we haven't gotten out yet to get our Christmas tree. But I love Christmas. I love um, decorating. I love natural greens. I love the smell. I, it's just, it's an amazing time for me. So that's something that we will be doing soon is going to uh, harvest our Christmas tree. We don't, we have room, well, we have the ceilings for a large tree, but we don't have the space for a large tree. So we get something small and I'll be sure to show you. Hey, Mike, good morning. <laughs> um, I have a funny story to share with you. Um, when I met the mountain man, he was the epitome of the Grinch and it wasn't because of the reason for the season. It was because of all the commercialism and all the garbage that gets put into the Christmas season and, and people getting, you know, stampeded on the way in to do their black Friday shopping and just the chaos of it all. And people putting such a dollar value on the season. So I had to soften him a little bit. Good morning, Kimberly. And uh, because I love it. It's just it's just something that has always been important to me. Always just, I just, I don't know, um, touches me in a special way. And uh, I had met him in August, September, and, I, and Christmas rolls around. I hadn't really met his dog a whole lot. Um, and he comes over. I had just gotten a little Christmas tree and planted it by the stairs on the farm and it was in an agate pot and I was so proud of it. It was just sitting there so nice um, and his dog gets out of the truck and his dog backs up and his dog pooped on my Christmas tree for real. <laughs> this is just always my funny story because I looked at him and I at the mountain man and I said what did you train him how to do that? 
It was just very funny. So that has been our ongoing joke, but I have softened him. Out here, we have the ability to create our own traditions, our own lifestyle um, completely. We are away from uh, people immediately. You know, we, we don't, our closest neighbor is over five miles. So it makes it really nice to be able to just create what is convenient, what is um, heartfelt, what is perfect for us. And um, being 2,500 miles away from our family, we don't get together with them for the holidays. Sometimes we will Skype and chat with everybody, which is really fun. Um, but it's been a little bit of uh, an interesting time for us because we have connected with some really... <laughs> exactly, Mike. you got to love the dogs. Was that not funny? Yeah, that was hysterical. Um, and you got to have a good sense of humor. That was just stinking funny. <laughs> but anyway, um, we have connected with a bunch of people out here. And what is really funny is the ones that we've connected the most with are the people that are actually originally from Pennsylvania. <laughs> so... Um, what we do and what we do is we get people together here and have our Christmas and um, usually it's a handful of people but it's it's a really nice uh, casual comfortable just really relaxed day and it's so much fun and you know we get out we go sometimes go hiking or uh, all kinds of different stuff we've hunted already uh, as well good morning my dear good morning Ashley so what are some of your traditions for the holidays? I would love to know. Um, if I jump on and move to the next subject, I wanted to you know, pop in and, and share them because I'd love to know. Um, we used to uh, decorate the tree um, as a family um, and getting our tree as a family was something we did as a child. We also go to the Christmas Eve candlelight service, which is... Um, really uh, something that I thoroughly enjoy. It's just, um, I don't even know how to put that into words. I just really enjoy it. Yes, isn't that funny, Diana? <laughs> yeah, so that was, he couldn't have planned that better, really. But um, I love, I love the holidays. And even if we aren't doing the same thing that we did before, um, creating your n new things and Doing them as a family is what really matters the most to me. I uh, feel so incredibly blessed with my men. The, the Mountain Man Junior and the Mountain Man, uh, we have just uh, created such a special life out here and a special lifestyle. And our family, um, you know, knows that we are extremely happy out here. And therefore, as much as they would like us to be with them for the holidays, they understand. So it makes it nice um, not having to run all over the place. That was something that we always did. Um, but it's, I don't know. I miss my family back home, but I do enjoy the ability to create our own little thing. And it's been really fun. So something else I want to bring up. And I was really excited. Um, the reason all of this came together for me this morning at 543, my eyes opened and my head just started spinning. And I always call those divine interventions where God just starts implanting. Um, I've been really struggling lately. I have been trying to come up with the theme for 2019. 2018 was um, living with intention. And we talked about that all year long. We've progressed. And I hope that you all are living with intention, that you are seeing that, you know, you are able to live by your terms and um, that we shouldn't be living by other people's terms or society's terms, that we should be living in a way that makes us joyful and happy and uh, that we feel rewarded in what we are doing. So living with intention is extremely important and it won't be not discussed next year because that's just something that's it's permanent and, and we need to continue that. But God implanted this morning um, the theme for this coming year and I'm so excited and it's so fitting. It is new beginnings. Um, as you all know, our year has been really sucky. Um, it is has not been a pleasant place to be. Not only were, are we having um, financial issues, but um, one of the things that happens at the holidays sometimes, and I'm going to kind of roll this into it, um, is that you have those unique individuals. You know, we all have family. Um, you can't change. 
Okay, it has stopped. It's gonna keep making noise probably. There we go. Okay, um, we all have those um, individuals in our lives that um, may be the naysayers, they, they may be the tough people to be around, um, or you may have people in your life that have um, hurt you, uh, maybe in an ongoing way. And we experienced some really tough stuff over the last year and a half um, with people that are really close to us. And it was family and friends that uh, really hurt us deeply. And I've talked about forgiveness in the past, but I'm reading um, the book that I've always recommended to you guys. I'm reading it a second time. Uh, I just felt nudged by God to read it again um, because I've dealt with forgiveness so many times in my life. But um, sometimes those hurts return or sometimes other circumstances occur. And the reason I want to talk about this now is because we've all traveled through this year and, and there may be some of us out there that have been hurt or uh, that have to spend time with people that aren't always the easiest to be around. And it's really important for us if we are going to have a new beginning and if we are going to live with intention and if we are going to live by our terms and be happy and be joyful that it is extremely important for us to forgive because if we don't forgive we remain stuck in a stagnant place in a place of bitterness in a place of unhappiness and you won't be able to have your new beginnings and you won't be able to live with intention because you are seeing you you are attracting the negativity that you are feeling so I wanted to encourage you guys to pay attention to that right now before we head into the new year to either make amends because sometimes you can make amends and and when you forgive people you can um, reconcile and then there are people that no matter how much you wish to reconcile it just won't happen and and those are the kind of that kind of situation can be very difficult because you you want it so bad and and you can't make it happen but that's where you need to come to terms and um, be willing to forgive regardless. So I want to read some things to you here. And um, I just want to encourage you that if this is a circumstance for you, that you please address it. Um, because it will, it will make such a huge difference in your life. So I want to share this with you. Um, some of you may not be familiar with the story of Joseph in the Bible. Joseph was a sheep herder. And um, his father favored him of all the brothers, and there were many. And it made the brothers jealous. So one day the father asked Joseph to go out and check on his brothers. And when they saw him coming and they were far enough away, good morning, Candy. Um, they chose to throw him in a well and leave him there to die. But one of the brothers wasn't comfortable with that and a uh, slave wagon was coming and they sold him um, for slavery. So Joseph ended up in, um, oh my goodness, Egypt, I totally zoned, sorry, um, ended up in Egypt. He ended up in a very wealthy man's home and was favored and that was because God had his hand on him and every situation that he was in he was favored and God God took care of him and he was with this Potiphar and Potiphar gave him you know fully trusted him however Potiphar's wife had a liking for Joseph and when Joseph wouldn't answer uh, her desires uh, she basically framed him back in the day and and claimed that he was trying to uh, rape her or seduce her so she, he ended up jailed. And in jail, you know, he was there, no release in sight, friended two people, a baker and a cupbearer. And um, the reason he became friends is because Joseph was gifted with the ability and the vision, um, the ability to uh, 
translate dreams. So these two had dreams, and the baker was doomed to death, and he and that's how uh, Joseph translated. And sure enough, he was he was uh, put to death. The cupbearer was going to be uh, reconciled with uh, the Pharaoh. And good morning, Chad. And um, he asked the cupbearer if he would please remember him when he was released. Well, unfortunately, he didn't. So again, Joseph was. Um, left behind and betrayed and you know he had quite the life of betrayal and um, eventually the Pharaoh had dreams that could not be translated and all of a sudden the cupbearer recalled him and he was released and put into high places in Egypt and eventually was put in place to manage all of Egypt under the Pharaoh and uh, there was a huge famine and this was all part of God's plan. And, you know, we went through these extreme trials this year. And you can choose to look at them negatively and see the worst of it. Oh, Chad is sick as a dog today, guys. So make sure you are praying some extra prayers for him. Sorry to hear that, ma'am. Sending prayers your way. And, uh, you know, we, we went through a rough spot. You guys, I'm sure, have many of you have gone through rough spots and betrayal and um, it's hard and you know it's all a choice as to what we want to look at. So I want to share this with you because this is really powerful. Um, Joseph finally was reunited with his family when they came to Egypt to get food and Joseph had a dream prior to all of this happening that caused some of the negativity uh, in his brothers and that was that he had a dream that his brothers would be bowing down to him at, at some point and um, it did turn out that way because um, Joseph was uh, put into a very high place and and God had great purpose in his position and and without Joseph um, there would have been a huge, huge famine, but Joseph was given guidance on how to handle that famine. So when Joseph was rekindled with his family, he could have been horribly bitter and incredibly, you know, could have done all kinds of awful things to his brothers. But instead, instead, what he said to them was, this is all part of God's plan for me and for you. That I'm going to read to you from this book. And by the way, this book is called When You've Been Wronged, Moving from Bitterness to Forgiveness. And you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash wronged. It says here, that's the power of releasing those who have injured you. Total exoneration through your words to them. And it says here that Joseph shows us the correct way to respond to wrongful treatment. In his reactions to the brothers who despised and manhandled him, he chose five godly responses. And we should too. One, choose to live in the present and not in the past. Rather than let past injustices destroy any hope of being fruitful in the now, Joseph forgot the past and focused on the present. Through the grace of God, and so can we. That's so huge. Because we're not built to look back. We're built to move forward. And you've heard me talk about this a lot. And, and the power of positive thinking. Oh, awesome, Diana. Diana said she's praying for Chad. Thank you. Moving forward and focusing on the future is so, so important versus being stuck in the past. And that's why I'm sharing this today. Because I want you all to have a new beginning this year and we are going to have an awesome new beginning you know even if you don't feel like you need a new beginning it's a new year it's a new chance to um, do positive things in your life and also make a difference in others so um, continuing with this number two is to choose to free those who have injured you through God's grace we can forgive even without discussing the past Joseph didn't discuss and, and throw at them all the awful things that they did to them. He just said that, you know, this is all part of God's plan for you and for me. And you know what? The other thing is with that, you know, there have been so many things in my past that I've had to walk through that have not been pleasant starting at a very young age. And you know what? I don't, I never did understand it. But I always had, I, I never blamed God. And I never, I never 
sat there moping on it. I just kept moving. I kept focusing how on how to strengthen myself and, and how to even better myself. And, you know, I look at that as the stepping stone. So, you know, there isn't anything that happened in my life, even though some of them have been really raw and really awful. I don't regret them happening in my life because they have made me who I am. They have connected me with uh, God in a much stronger way. They have connected me with other individuals and I feel it's all divinely lined up as a part of my plan. So it's all how we look at things. Number three is remember that in the injustice God is present. When God permits evil he will use it for some higher end. We can move beyond our past when we can embrace it as part of his good plan. And that's so true and I think that's why I have such a a positive focus in life. I refuse to look at the negative. I am always finding the shiny penny. I could be rolling around in a pile of mud and I will still find the shiny part of it, you know? And it's all a choice. You know, I use, I have been told that I wear pink shady glasses. I'm okay wearing the pink shady glasses because my life is so much more pleasant and better than if I wasn't. So it's a choice. Number four, choose to bless those who have wronged you. Joseph did and Jesus commands us to in Matthew 5, 44. Blessing those who have wronged you has the power to set you free. This is so true. When we, when we bless those that have wronged us, um, we, are, we, we might be helping them, but we are helping ourselves more than anything else because we are keeping ourselves from bondage. And, you know, there are those people that will not reconcile, that you can't speak to, that you can't get close to. And you know what? Those are the ones that I pray for. And those are the ones in our lives right now. Um, through through st circumstances that we couldn't control. So the only thing we can do is control ourselves. And rather than be bitter and miserable, you know, we still love them and pray for them. And, uh, and keeping them at a distance has been actually healthy for us. So... Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to walk away from situations and, and it's very difficult because sometimes those are the people that are closest to us. But um, if you are not in a healthy environment and, and um, nothing good is coming of it and you're seeking things that may never happen, it, it is sometimes healthiest to walk away and, and, or to create boundaries um, and so forth. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we just have to do that. I've come to terms with that. It was very difficult. But um, number five is choose not to retaliate. Vengeance is God's business, not ours. So trust God to right all the wrongs in the day of judgment. You know, in all of this, by doing all five of those, you take such a weight off of your shoulders and remove yourself from bondage in such a big way. It's just like decluttering your home. You know, when you declutter your home, you, you just remove so much from yourself that you don't realize is there. And the same is true when you forgive somebody and fully forgive somebody. You know, it's easy to say, I forgive you, but it's got to be something deep in. It's got to be a heart thing. And knowing that God has purpose in everything that happens to us is a really huge thing. Um, so the past is the past and the future begins now. He tells his brothers not to berate themselves over the past. He is willing to forgive without even discussing the past. No need for self-incrimination. So this last part that I have to read to you I think is the most powerful part of all of this. In his injustice, Joseph saw God. And that's a choice. You can see the enemy at, at hand and sit there bitterly moping in your situation or you can see God's work even if it's a little bit at a time, and that's what we've been seeing all year. My focus is always on our blessings and always on God and it and just knowing that He's there. And seeing seeing His blessings is knowing He's there. And it's an awesome feeling if you're willing to focus on that. So it says, Notice it is not just that Joseph believed that God took evil and worked it for good, but rather that the evil of his brothers was actually part of God's plan. God was sovereign even over Joseph's injustice and suffering. Joseph lived many centuries before Romans 8.28 was written, and yet he understood with incredible clarity that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Joseph was able to see God in the midst of evil. So powerful. Now, this is the most important part in my eyes. 
If all that you can see is the devil in your injustice or the abuse, you will never be free from the power of your past. You must see God to you must see God too. You must see him as permitting the evil and intending to use the evil for some higher end. We can only move beyond our past when we can embrace it as part of a plan. And while others meant it for evil, we must see it as God intending it for our good. That gives us an entirely different perspective and enables us to give praise to God, not for the evil as such, but for how God will use it in our lives. So I must ask again, do you see God in your circumstances? Do you also see God in his providence in the evil that was done to you? God superintends our lives in order to accomplish his will. Unfortunately, we all have to such enormous potential to short circuit what God wants to do if we are determined to hang on to our bitterness. And that is, you know, some people, that is their life, is their bitterness. And and it saddens me deeply because life can be so much grander. Um, those, and and, and it, is, it is a heart issue. Their hearts are cold. They put walls up and they just harbor their bitterness. And I don't want to see you guys do that because there is such... A amazing and bright life ahead of us if we're willing to allow it. So God does not leave us when we have been dealt injustice, but draws near, helping us accept it and move on. Praise, uh, pause now and bring God into your situation by faith, by giving thanks for all He is doing in your life. Thanksgiving for God's faithfulness in our pain is the indisputable proof that we believe God is a part of our pain and our plan. I just think that's awesome stuff. And what's really crazy is, like I said, God put all this together for me at 5.43 this morning, and it probably took about a minute that it all just fused together, and it's just so awesome. Um, and I really, I really, I really am glad that this is what we are discussing today because we can't have new beginnings and we can't have a good life if we're not willing to look past our bitterness and um, the injustices that are done to us. We're going to have injustices all the time. I'm just going to share, I, this just is being nudged to me right now, so I'm going to share it. Maybe it's meant to help somebody out there. When the mountain boy was little, um, and my kids were little, uh, their dad walked out on me, and I was totally oblivious to a two-year affair, and I the rug was ripped out from under me. I had babies so that I could have a family. And um, it was a really difficult place to be. I tried to work it out, and that was not successful. Um, and I came to realize that God blessed me greatly. That by Him leaving, I was given a new beginning. And I was not stuck in a, in a negative, bad place that I was wearing the pink shady glasses thinking it was good because um, it wasn't and it was actually a blessing so it all depends how you look at things um, that certainly was not how I wanted things to go but God had a greater plan and had he not had that greater plan I would not be here I would not have the mountain man I would not have a good marriage I would not have a good Christian man who loves me and shows me that and a relationship that I know in my heart with with complete sternness that he will never leave me and he knows the same of me so it is really powerful when you do have a good relationship but it's also really powerful when you can see that the things that happened in your life had purpose and when you can look back if you look back only look back to connect the dots don't look back in bitterness and in negativity connect the dots and see how God had it all lined up. It's been amazing. I mean, I can look back and connect the dots and it's just so incredible. Good morning, Cindy. Now, Jackie says, you are so right. We need to forgive our hurts so it doesn't hold us back and cripple us. We can't do that without faith in God. Absolutely. And you know, something else, you, the word cripple triggered this. You know, bitterness, negativity, and our an unwillingness to forgive can actually cause sickness in the body. So it's really, really important that if, and, and I really feel that this is the time to embrace this. You know, whatever injustices might have occurred to, to you this year, 
you need to move past them before you enter the new year because you will get a fresh start and a new beginning. And I'm just, I am so excited. I, I was working on my goals and, and um, what I want to accomplish for 2019 on Monday. And it was really bugging me that I could not think of what the theme needed to be. And it's not that I have to have a theme, but last year I had a theme and it was very, very powerful. And I wanted to continue that, that motion and, and have something just as powerful and that maybe complemented living with intention. And this certainly does. So I'm really excited. So you'll be hearing a lot more about the new beginnings and how we are going to embrace that. And, you know, if any of you have had a lot of injustice and you've been struggling with for forgiveness, I've read a lot of books on forgiveness. I've had to forgive all of my life. And I learned how to do it very well because I realized that you could be stuck if you were bitter. And I didn't want to miss the best parts of life because I was stuck because of somebody else's ignorance most of the time. How foolish, right? I mean, they've already maybe kicked you in the teeth. Now, you know, you are going to allow them to ruin your life because you're stuck on it. So I hope that plays some perspective. But if you need extra prayers... Um, to help you on that journey, please don't hesitate to either private message me, email me, or leave a comment below. Um, and get this book. You can get it from the library. You can get it from Amazon. But it, it, you can find it again by going to treyerwilderness.com slash wronged, W-R-O-N-G-E-D. And um, it was just kind of funny because uh, every everything always flows. I told you, I haven't had to concentrate on laying out what I'm going to do each week on here because God gives it to me. This was today's devotional and I think it's awesome. <laughs> Romans 8, 5. Those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. This is set your mind number one. So this is obviously a series. I didn't look ahead to see um, how many there are going to be. Just, okay, there's three of them. But this is really interesting and really powerful how they all go together. To become the person God wants you to be, you must set your mind on the right thing. You say, if only my circumstances were different. Your circumstances don't determine the quality of your life. How you think about them does. Poet Frederick Langbridge wrote, Two men looked out their prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw stars. Both men were in identical circumstances, but their perspectives, perspectives were entirely different. One looked for beauty and found it, and the other focused on ugliness and found it too. It works like this. Your circumstances in life produce certain emotions. So how do you change your emotional response when you feel powerless over people and circumstances? By changing how you think about them. True change always begins in your mind. The Bible says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The way you think inevitably reflects the way you live. So to become the best version of yourself, the person God wants you to be, think great thoughts. People who live great lives are people who habitually think great thoughts. You say, but I can't help thinking the way I do. Then let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Romans 12, 2. God's word will help you to think with faith instead of fear assurance instead of anxiety, and joy instead of negativity. Once you set your mind on what the Spirit desires, your life will begin to change for the better. How awesome is that? Is that not cool? I just thought that was very fitting. I wanted to say so often about, you know, I could look out the window and see mud. You know, it's all perspective, and it's all choices. And you know, some often, like it said there, we don't feel like we can change anything. But we have amazing powers within us and that were granted to us through God. And I want to I want to leave you with a thought um, and something to think about. Um, and probably I gotta open this here. Bear with me a second. And for some of you, I might leave you with your head shaking. Um, this has happened to me before. And um, 
I'm sorry. I was looking at it on my iPhone earlier and I cannot do that now because I am recording. So give me two seconds to find a verse. There we go. Okay. Nope, that's not it. Sorry. I bookmarked. There it is. Okay. All right. So God has blessed us with the ability to do a lot in his name. And you all know I've been very sick. And there have been times through my sickness that God has blessed me greatly. Um, but it was because I had great faith in him and a great belief that what I asked for in his name could be. Um, when I was, before my surgery, um, I had a lot of heat running up my arms and my legs. It felt like somebody lit a match and it was constant. And I was, t you know, connecting with doctors, talking to natural doctors. Nobody could understand what I was experiencing. Come to find that it was probably just the extreme level of toxins in my body, but also that it might be part of God's plan. Um, I had the heat for probably a year and a half and I was laying in bed. My body was really, really struggling. My organs were really overloaded. Um, and it was October uh, when I was diagnosed and my surgery couldn't be till January. And I was, my organs were starting to shut down. My liver was so extremely taxed. And I was laying in bed and I was starting to get really fearful that I wasn't going to make it till my surgery, that my body was going to shut down because I was laying there and the heat was traveling up my legs and up my arms. I could feel it starting to go to my chest. And I was just so afraid. I've always been very in tune with my body and I was afraid that that was the signs that I was starting to really shut down. So I prayed to God and I asked him and I prayed to him in Jesus name and asked him to please show me a sign that I will be okay to my surgery and ask him to touch my hand. And my hand was hanging off the side of the bed and my hand got very heavy and the heat that I was experiencing for all that time and that was it getting worse completely went away. Gone. Completely gone. And it never came back. That's just one example of how God has worked um, a miracle in my life. And this morning while I was laying there, I have had extreme hip and pelvis pains and um, my, my hips and my pelvis have been going out of place uh, since September and it's very painful and I was starting to get sciatica symptoms and was laying in bed this morning after I woke and he implanted this stuff and I, I was just I was kind of angry um, not at him um, maybe that I didn't ask sooner but I'm like I'm done with this and I'm like this pain in my hips and my, my legs and my back needs to go away in Jesus' name. And I rolled. And I have not been able to roll in my bed without pain since September. And I have to be care very careful how I roll because if I roll too fast or too aggressively, um, things would go out of place. And I rolled and I was pain free. And I got out of bed this morning and I could dance and move like I haven't been able to move since September. So guys, we have the ability to do so many things and so many powerful things in our lives if we are willing to believe, if we are willing to forgive, and we are willing to have faith like a child. So I'm going to read something else to you quick here. Matthew 17, 20 tells us that you don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. That should be something that we hang on to. Um, we, we have amazing powers in, in God's name and in Jesus' name. And we have amazing, amazing powers inside ourselves if we are willing um, to work at it. You know, you might be a negative thinker, you might might worry, 
those are all things that you can remove. I used to be a worrier. I, th I think once you give birth to children, you worry. And I, I worried. I worried about all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't worry about anything today. I just keep taking one step forward and trusting. And I can't tell you how and what an amazing place that is to be. So the reason I'm, I, I look forward to the new year is because we've been, we've been muddling through the last three. It's been really rough. And, and not to say that 2019 may not have some rough spots, but life is sometimes what we choose to make it. Even through the valleys, even through the injustice, even through the hard parts, we can still see the shiny penny. We can still make that miserable spot something good. And through that spot and through that, that good, we can reach other people and be contagious. So let our new beginnings this new year be something that is contagious. I want people to know where my hope is coming from. I want them to ask me where it comes from so I can share it with them. And I want them to have what I got. Not material stuff. Just the spirit that I have. I, I want it to be that powerful. And I want that to be God shining through. I love the way, um, oh, his name just totally left me. Todd White says that when, when we're squeezed in bad situations, that God comes out. And I love that. I absolutely love that. And I want that to be so. And I think that our year has been a reflection of that. Um, I've, sh I've been very open. Um, I, I, I've told you before, I wish that during my surgery and d during that time, I would have been more open to sharing and, and being more transparent. Um, I didn't have the mind to be there. I couldn't even hold a conversation at the time. So maybe, you know, it, it was part of God's plan, maybe. But I don't want... I don't want to, I want to be transparent. I want you to see as it's happening and, and to see it as, as, as I see it. It's just been an amazing walk. And, you know, we could look back and say that this, it was, it was the worst year ever, but it was the most amazing year as well. So it's all perspective. It's all how we look at it. Thank you for sharing with us. I have to go. Everyone have a tremendously great week. Thank you too, Diana. Love you, girl. You as well have a great week and God bless. So guys, that's what God implanted in me today to share with you. And I am going to end with a prayer. If you guys have questions, comments, uh, prayers, anything, please don't hesitate to comment. If you think that this is something that can be shared with others, I would absolutely be thrilled if you would take the time to share it because this helps me reach more people. And that is my goal. And as far as tradition, something that we do... Um, Christmas Eve is read the Christmas story and the story of Jesus and before we open anything on Christmas Day we go around with each of us and and share how God has worked in our lives and what we are thankful for and um, that has always been really powerful and you know men and women communicate differently and it's really interesting when you um, start doing that and at our dinner table, often we will ask, you know, what are you thankful for today? And, you know, the mountain man might have had a rough day. Things were breaking, but he'll still find something to be thankful for. And what I was getting at with the differences in men and women is a man may not tell you um, directly um, something personal. Uh, but when asked what is blessing them, you know, they may be more apt to share at that point and you might be surprised at some of the things that are shared um, and that goes both ways you know men and women communicate differently so maybe there's a woman in your life that um, doesn't open up very much but when you ask what how they're blessed you might you might get the ant you know just be enlightened so maybe something to start doing at your dinner table or Christmas morning but that's a tradition that we hold to and um, won't ever change all right, guys, I'm going to say a prayer for us. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for these wonderful people that take time out of their busy schedules to join me every week. And Lord, I just ask that you bless them greatly. Wrap your loving arms around them. Help those that need to forgive. Help those that are harboring bitterness and resentment, regret, all of those things. Sometimes we need to forgive ourselves 
and 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 be kinder to ourselves and gives our give ourselves grace and and lord just be with them give them the courage to remove these negative things from our lives and to prepare for a new beginning and remind them to live with intention by living with intention we are living by our terms and holding on to the things that we value most for me that is you in my life and i am just so thankful that you divinely implant all this great stuff for me every week it just blows me away and how you work in my life and my family and lord i just ask that you also enable each of us to be a light to others to serve this holiday season uh, in one way or another what is fitting to us and lord just let us be so filled with you that people people want it. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives ahead and for what you have done so far this year. Like I said, it has been a miserable year, but it has been such a fantastic year too. And uh, even more of a fantastic year than a miserable year. Just because of perspective and because of the grace and mercy that you show us daily. So, Lord, I just ask that you be with everyone, keep them safe and healthy till next week. Uh, keep your hand on Jim, Lord, and just help him and be with the family uh, with his health being so grim. And, Lord, if it's your will and if, if we would just love to see you work in his heart and allow him to accept you uh, before he passes on. And, Lord, just, again, be with the family. And Lord, be with all of our prayer lists. They all have different needs. And Lord, you know their needs. So just wrap your loving arms around them. Be with them. Guide them. Heal them. Love them. And encourage and empower them. And Lord, I just ask you to do the same for our audience that may be in need and is afraid to ask. So Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do and love you. And ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. I gave you a lot to think about today, and I hope you seriously think about it. Um, forgiveness is a huge stepping stone to living your life, a free life, a life free of bondage. And uh, our focus and what we choose to look at uh, has a huge bearing too. And I hope that, I'm, that you're seeing that through me. Um, God does amazing things. And... I just feel truly blessed, So, and I feel blessed by you guys, too. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to spend it with me, and have a great rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Love you guys. God bless.